to the On The Air podcast, a companion to On The Air magazine, a bi-monthly magazine from ARRL for beginner to intermediate ham radio licensees. I'm your host and the editor of On The Air, Becky Schoenfeld, W1BXY. Every month, the On The Air podcast extends material found in On The Air magazine to help you learn about the many things the ham radio hobby and service has to offer. The On The Air podcast is sponsored by ICOM for the love of ham radio. Welcome to the April 2025 episode. This month, we're catching up with ARL education specialist, Wayne Green, KB4DSF, who is the host of the new monthly live stream, On the Air Live, which premiered in January. And we're going to talk a bit about the upcoming April episode on the automatic packet reporting system. Welcome, Wayne. Thanks, Becky. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for being here with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, Wayne, On the Air Live kicked off uh, in January 2025 um, Mm -hmm. with a live interactive session teaching hams about slow scan television, SSTV. Um, Mm -hmm. And I believe we had you here on the podcast to introduce that. Um, I was at that session There was a full house of 50 people, all very engaged. It went really well. I know I learned a lot. Um, Since then, you've held the February and March sessions, which were a um, two-parter about how to use your handheld radio. Uh, I watched the recording of the February session, um, which is available to ARL ARL members at learn.arl.org, along with all the recordings of the other on the air live sessions so far. Mm -hmm. Um, And that handheld session really seemed like it had a a lot of good basic information in it that people can really use to get at the functionality um, in their handhelds. Uh, So how do you feel it's going so far three sessions into on the air live? (laughs) So uh, I think it's going really well. It's uh, it's been a learning experience for me for sure. Um, Never really d- did much of that kind of uh, kind of kind of thing. I've been on camera before, but um, but I, teaching or trying to help people learn something that is a passion of mine anyway, and it just it just really seems to be flowing pretty well. So yeah, we did the slow scan TV. Got a lot of really good feedback on that, and the feedback we got on the uh, how to use your HT, especially the part one, was was really good. One of the things I'm working on now is is trying to um, trying to gauge how much material to have in in each episode it, it so um in the in the third one which was a part two if you will to how to use your ht we were going to cover a lot of material and i trimmed it down just to cover aprs we're going to cover the rest of the material as well at a uh, later date but um but we learned how to be able to take our ht hook it up to a sound card or a terminal no controller and uh and work packet in a uh aprs so yeah oh great so yeah. if uh if folks are thinking about uh registering for the upcoming april 22nd on the air live which will be more about aprs um would it be good for them to go back into the recording of um the march uh session because they're they're going to get that information about the terminal node controller would that be helpful it would be um, so with with the uh, with that session, what we talked about is how to actually hook it up, configure mm-hmm. it, the sound card or the TNC, and uh, actually do you know transmit and receive. And we used we did that over a computer and actually over a smartphone. I showed how to uh, how to do that. So um, so yeah, it's, it would definitely be good to, to to go back and take a look at that so you can see how to actually how to work it. So for the next for the upcoming episode. We're going to we're going to go down into APRS and really talk about uh, a bit about what it is, how it's made up, what the network looks like, uh, different devices that the user can use, and various things that you can do with APRS. Um, a, a lot of people use APRS; they got them on their cars. Matter of fact, I'm watching APRS right now um, in my studio, and there's two airplanes flying over and running APRS as well. So. But there's a lot more that you can do with APRS, and that's what we're going to talk about in the, in the upcoming episode. Yeah. Okay. So April twenty second, mm-hmm. APRS, yes. the yeah. automatic packet reporting system. So, right. um, so why did you choose APRS as a topic for the on the air live series, which is specifically geared to new 
and newer hams, giving them the basics. So what makes APRS a, a good thing for newer hams to know about and learn how to use? It's an active digital mode, and that's really what I wanted to uh, present with the about the HT that, you know, not only how to use your HT to, you know, do simplex or duplex or over repeater uh, phone type communications, but there you can put this sound card or terminal control, uh, controller onto your HT and, and expand it. And uh, for the VHF side, the easiest way to do that would be to get into get into APRS. Uh, here where I live, our, uh, we have a really nice Sorry, we have a really nice APRS network here, um, and I know that there are several other places where there where there are good ones. And um, a couple things you can do that you probably hadn't thought about, or at least some hadn't thought about. I can see two meter um, two meter propagation openings happen uh, live as as I'm watching APRS. I'm starting to get I'm starting to receive stuff from from our DigiPeter, but from as far up like I live in Georgia, as far away as North Carolina, uh, all of Florida. Uh, matter of fact, we had one that where the opening was all the way out to Texas, which was uh, mm. which was kind of nice. So, um, it's a fascinating it, it's a fascinating mode. It's one that I I absolutely enjoy working, and it has a lot of versatility as well. So, seemed like a really good spot, uh, good place to start learning how to do uh, digital communications with a network where you can get some immediate feedback uh, on it. So, and, and make contacts, which so. That's that's the biggest thing. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So it sounds like in terms of the new hams that the On The Air Live series seeks to reach, it sounds like APRS is yet another thing that folks can yeah. do with their handheld radio. They don't have yeah. to go out and buy an expensive radio. Um, yeah. A lot of new folks, the ham, handheld's the first radio they get. So right. this is right. another thing they can do with it. And um, and. It sounds like a good way to start learning about propagation if it gives you a yeah. look at two meter propagation. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, I did want to comment too about the uh, the radio. So in the episodes, I've been using the uh, Baofeng UV5R. Mm -hmm. um, my decision on that was based on, well, I don't have any data to, to support my claim here, but I, I'd say the vast majority of hams especially new ones when they first uh, get their license that's likely the radio they're going to buy it's it's super cheap i just <laughs> just a few weeks ago just bought two because they were they were on sale for two for 25 dollars. so you know why not that's a, <laughs> that, another, another two uh, another two bow things that i've got in my uh, in my arsenal now but um so i wanted to show people you, you you made the comment you don't have to have an expensive radio not at all the uv5r will do the job for you with uh, with an additional piece of equipment so yeah yeah, it's okay. hard to beat two for 25. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So um, so APRS, which has been around for a while now, um, I think right. a little over 30 years, um, yeah. is based on packet radio, which has been around since I think the late 1970s. Right. And um, can you go into a little bit about what packet radio is and how it works? Is that something that... Uh, you have discussed in on the air live so far, or something that you will discuss on the twenty second. Uh, I, I broached it a little bit in the yep. uh, in the last one. Yeah, we're going to talk about it uh, about it some more in real simple terms. We're not going to get really uh, technical about it, but um, but basically uh, for the um, for packet radio, packet is just it's a specified um, specified piece of data. The data that you're trying to send is broken up into different pieces or different packets. And each of those packets, they contain things in a, in a header, such as, um, you know, it'll have my call sign in it. And if I'm sending it to a particular person, it'll have that call sign in there as well. Uh, kind of like a destination, if you will. And um, in a checksum. Uh, so the idea is that once the packets go out, the network, the network uh, for one packet, it may go out a completely different route than any other packets or whatever. It's just depending on that moment, which way is the, the best way for that packet to get to where it needs to go. At the end, once it gets to the recipient, then it all gets put back together. That's part of the reason for the checksum. There'll be like a serial number, if you will, in there. And then the checksum also checks and makes sure that the data is good. There's some, some forward error control in there. Mm -hmm. So if the checksum doesn't work out right, then going back to our uh, technician license uh, exam, right? Then then you get this ARQ. That's that automatic request for uh, for resend. So make and then you get that next 
next uh, that next packet again so that it puts it back together correctly. So that's a in a nutshell, that's packet radio, and it all happens like super fast. Um, the uh, if you're familiar with the old uh, telephone modem days, it sounds a lot like that. <laughs> but um, but it's again, it 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 is it's very effective too. And it's and you mentioned it's been around for about thirty years or so. The thing about APRS is I don't think we have I don't think anybody yet has a real good handle on the power of APRS yet either. Um, every day I'm I'm learning something new that I can. Uh, that I can do with APRS. So yeah, so yeah, right. I think it's I think it's going to continue to evolve to, to something amazing. So, so um, April twenty second, that'll be a Tuesday yes. um, mm -hmm. at eight o'clock on uh, ARL's learning platform at learn.arl.org. And yep. uh, can you give us an overview of what you'll be presenting at that session? Can you talk us through it? Yeah, so we're going to start with we're going to start with what packet radio or not, well what the packet is just kind of what I explained there and then the APRS network what makes up the network so it 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 includes like the equipment that you can buy and use and you can use that simplex if you wish to you don't have to use the APRS network you can you can communicate via simplex back and forth with your radios and and um, running packet if you wish to. But then the packet network, what makes that up? We're going to talk about the um, the digipeters and the eye gates, uh, how that the uh, APRS leverages the power of the internet to um, uh, to be able to communicate. For instance, if I happen to see someone on my APRS map, and we're going to talk about the mapping system as well. If I see someone on my APRS map, and even though they're not in my local area, I could send a message to them. And of course, that's going to be uh, leveraging the power of the internet once it gets to uh, our local digi digipeter, which is only about two miles to the south of me, I think. Um, once, it, once it gets that digipeter, it gets gated and gated to the internet and it goes out to a digipeter that will be close to the recipient that, that I'm reaching out to. Um, so yeah, how, how the network works. And we'll, we'll talk about also it's not a perfect system. It's you know all of the the network is made up of made up of volunteers who do this. So there are areas that that aren't covered all that well, and some of the viewers unfortunately are going to be in those areas. I, I think, but I will also talk about how they could be part of the solution, where they could set up their own simple eye gate. It doesn't even have to be a digipeter. They can just set up a simple eye gate using um, the equipment that I showed just last month so that they can gate data going to the internet as well. So, okay. So that, that's the kind of stuff we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and, oh, I didn't cover everything yet. I'm sorry. Um, I'm also going to demonstrate some of the things that you can do with it. I just mentioned being able to send messages to other users. You can send messages to uh, through APRs to cell phones. They don't have to be ham radio operators. You can send them to cell phones and that they can be re replied to. Emails, you can check your wind link. Um, send one link messages. So we're all of that. We're going to talk about all of that and how to actually use it. So, okay. Great. So, <laughs> uh, so, you know, as the name of the session says on the air live, this is going to be live on the, yes. the 22nd. So yes. as you're going through all of this, um, the folks who are in the session live with you are going to be able to raise their hand and ask questions in real time. Uh, yes. If there's somebody who's a little knowledgeable, they can share their own experiences and methods yes. so that everybody can can benefit. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really a, a different sort of experience than just pulling up a, a video and, and watching it. Um, if you get there on the 22nd, you can actually interact and uh, and get your questions answered. H how's that been going so far? Do you find that people are chiming in? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we do get questions and absolutely that is my favorite part of the on the air live is uh, for the the viewers to have the chance to actually ask questions, and uh, and it, it, and it's what's nice is you know that you're hitting on something that that they want to know about, mm -hmm. and they want to know more about. So we we have either one or two co-hosts uh, in the sessions as well, and they're monitoring the chat. We get a lot of questions through the chat that, and they will answer those questions as I'm going. But if there's a question that um, that that they want to send to me directly, they can, and then I can answer that question. Uh, we've had a couple of people uh, use the raise their hand, you know, kind of thing, and ask questions too. But I, I absolutely love getting getting the questions and being able to try to, um, 
guide, you know, guide them or give answers that will help them uh, be motivated to, to give things a try. So um, one of the other things I'm going to attempt, I hope, <laughs> is one of the viewers, I, I got to, uh, if I can get like user information, uh, either email or cell phone or something, I'm going to try to send a message to um, to, to one of them, especially over the cell phone, if I can get it to the cell phone so they can see, you know, that a text message coming from using just my radio. Now, it does that signal will go, it go to the internet, but they will get that get that message on their phone. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so oh, try great. to have some fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, real time learning. That's fantastic. Yeah, right. <laughs> OK, right. great. So um, so that's the next on the air live session coming yes. up April 22nd. And folks who are members of ARL uh, can log in to the uh, ARL Learning Center at right. learn.arl.org and yeah. register ahead of time for that April yeah. 22nd section on APRS. Um, there's no charge. Um, no if charge. you're a member, you're, you're in, but you do have yeah. to register. Yeah. So, uh, registration is open right now. Yep. So get on over there, learn.arl.org. And it's at 8 p.m. on Tuesday, April 22nd. That's um, it. Yeah. yeah. And at that same URL, there are the uh, recordings of past sessions that you can, folks can watch at their leisure. And uh, I have been doing that myself. And that's, <laughs> that's been great. Excellent. All right. Thanks. Well, um, thanks a lot for being here, Wayne. Uh, Wayne really KB Ford. It. DSF has joined yep. us today. Thank you so much. And uh, one way or another, I'll be seeing you uh, on a screen again, probably <laughs> on right, April 22nd. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to learn more about On the Air and even register for Wayne's April 22nd live stream about how to learn to use APRS, visit learn.arl.org. Thanks again to Wayne KB4DSF for being here. We will be back in May, but in the meantime, feel free to send comments about On the Air magazine to OTA at ARRL.org. And if you want to learn more about ARL membership, you can visit ARRL.org. Until next time, I'm Becky Schoenfeld, W1BXY, 73.